Tuesday Drive with Stephen. Now, if you're like me, you have a smartphone, no doubt you've uh, probably taken thousands and thousands of photos over the life of having that little device in your hand. And I was actually just going through some of my photos oh, yesterday, actually, going through the countless uh, amounts of them, and I found some. I, I actually rediscovered some that I thought were, were really great. But then I went back a little bit further and I found a lot of other photos that I thought to myself, why did I take that photo? Like, what was I thinking? Why did I not set the shot up? And I just basically thought, that's just a sign of our times these days. We, we're so used to having that camera in our pocket that uh, we don't even think about it. Well, luckily for us, there is a group of people in our world, in our region, the beautiful Shell Haven, that we like to call photographers, and uh, they're the kindly folk who actually do put a little bit more thought into the pieces that uh, they're about to uh, snap with the uh, the shutter button there, and I'm so excited to uh, welcome Rachel Tag into our Triple U of M studio, who's uh, recently taken out a rather high honour. Hello, Rachel. Welcome. Hello, Steve. Thank you. Now, it's lovely to uh, have you in this afternoon. Now, before we actually get into the actual award itself, can you tell me when did the love of photography start? Oh, I've loved to take photos ever since I was young. I think as soon as I could actually physically take a photo with my dad's old camera, I was straight into it. But um, having a smartphone kind of that replaced a lot of it for me for a long time. And then I found myself once I started having children that I just wanted better photos and I wanted better quality photos. And so I decided to do a manual course that taught me how to shoot in manual mode. Um, And that led to basically what I'm doing today. When you say you're shooting in manual mode, do you have those little cheat sheets that you sometimes see (laughs) that they're trying to flog on social media? Or do you just sort of know it off the top of your head now? No, you know it off the top of your head now. But it definitely helps when you're starting out. And I think... It's just such a hurdle to get over that, what we call the exposure triangle. Mm. Um, But once that kind of kicks in and it makes sense to you, everything starts just becoming so much easier. Now, Rachel, I'm going to share a bit of a secret with you. Mm -hmm. And because I am videotaping this, people are going to see you roll your eyes. But uh, years ago, when I was actually at TAFE and I was uh, doing photography and uh, I bought myself a a digital SLR camera, Mm -hmm. thinking that, you know, it was going to take wonderful photos and just make... Like, you know, all my photos pop, and of course, it didn't really happen. And then I really got into it, and you, you, like you see, you go, you go, go for the ISO, you go for the exposure, mm-hmm. the timing, blah, blah, blah. In the end, and I've ha- now had my DSLR for nearly 15 years, I go back to the automatic mode. Mm. It just makes my life so much easier. Very common. Yeah, you're rolling your eyes, aren't yep. you? Because <laughs> <laughs> they say, don't they say, say, take it off automatic mm. and just go and explore, don't they, with those settings? It's so hard, though. I think when you, you switch it into manual mode and suddenly nothing's happening automatically and people freak out mm. and... It just takes practice and it's like anything, the more you do it, the more comfortable you become with it and you start to assess different situations and go, okay, I need to reduce my shutter speed or Mm. increase my shutter speed and things like that start to make more sense once you're actually doing it. Now, we know that life uh, moves very, very quickly mm-hmm. these days. Now, you've obviously got your camera with you, I'd say, dare say, most of the time. Mm-hmm. You've got it set on manual. Mm-hmm. If something like happens really quickly in front of you that you want to capture, yeah. are, are you able just to, to manually adjust your camera where you'll get a good picture? Yeah, wow. I, I can now. I found myself just recently walking into a room going I know exactly what settings my camera needs to be Mm. on and I had to almost step back for a second and go well I've actually come a long Mm. way in Mm. such a short period of time because two years ago I I couldn't do that and um, it was only recently that I was learning how to use my coffee machine which I purchased in isolation like a lot of people (laughs) did in the world. Like a bread machine. Yeah yeah and I had to figure out how to um, figure out my grinder Mm. and I'd I'd never used a grinder before and I remember stopping for a second and going okay if I can learn how to shoot in manual mode I can figure (laughs) out this coffee machine (laughs) and it's just like I said with anything the more you do it the more it becomes natural and now I can make a wicked coffee. Was it difficult to go to the coffee machine <laughs> after coming from a camera? Uh, oh, look, I was finding myself becoming very frustrated when I'm like, why isn't it working? But I got there. I, I was just talking, obviously, at the start there about smartphone. Like, basically, every person has a smartphone. Mm. They essentially have a camera in their pocket these days. 
as every new smartphone comes out, they all seem to well, they're, they're promoted in the sense that they can take better and greater pictures, mm. um, especially ones these days. You know, with low light conditions. Yeah. You've obviously got a smartphone. Mm-hmm. When you look at your your digital SLR, are they sort of are they on sort of compar- like on a parity these days, or is a is a good old fashioned SLR still the way to go? I think the difference is even with it's the same with a camera. Even with a really good smartphone camera, you yeah. still have to know how to use it properly, and you know have to how to have to know how to read the light, how to look at things, and go okay. I need to you know place my subject here, um, make sure there's no distraction in the background so you can still take a really good photo on a smartphone you just have to know how to use it properly now speaking of photographs uh, tell me about your photograph which uh, the australian photography awards describes as the innocence of childhood against the foreboding smoke on the horizon mm, that photo i took exactly a year ago yesterday oh wow um when it was just a really horrific time for anyone living in this area in particular. And we weren't directly impacted by the fires where we lived, but that day kind of became a bit of emergency shelter for some family and friends who did live in evacuated areas. And at the time, it was ridiculously hot. And um, my kids were just out on the street playing with chalk, as they do quite often in summer. Um, And even with everything that was going on that summer, we still wanted to try and keep everything as normal as possible for them. Mm. So we just went on about our lives as we did, even with the chaos happening around them. And it was just this moment where the smoke cloud that I think everyone has burned into their memory, what that looked like was just crossing over the blue sky that we had seen for that morning. And my son just stopped and looked up at the smoke with a chalk all around him and just looked at it and went, Mom, the sky's burning. Mm. And I had my camera on me, as I pretty much always do. All my friends always joke about it. Um, And I just took a, a photo instantly. And I think it was just that moment of knowing, having that confidence to take a photo and use the right settings and portray the right um, message that I wanted to with that that image I couldn't have done that without that experience and and having learned how to use my camera properly and I think that's the difference between someone who can just take a good photo and someone who takes a a powerful image and you know I'm I'm really proud of that photo and I have to say too the way that you've actually described your photo is exactly what is in the photo (laughs) you've got your son there in the forefront you do you have that that smoke like you said like none of us will ever forget that Mm -mm. And the chalk, I just love how the chalk is just casually on, on the street there. Yeah. Like, it's, it's just fantastic. <laughs> yeah. When you, when you took that photo, did you think much more of it? I mean, yeah. you just wanted to capture that moment in time, mm. because that's something that you'll probably talk to your son about when he's a teenager yeah. or, or a young adult. Yeah. How did it get into the Australian Photography Awards? <laughs> I think when I posted it, it wasn't until maybe a week later that I actually posted it on my social media. And it obviously resonated with a lot of people. I didn't think too much about it at the time. I knew that I loved the image and I was really proud of it at the time even then. But having it capture the emotions for so many other people and um, kind of give an, an innocence to what that time was like, it kind of made me realise that there was something more in it than what I was seeing. And so I just kept every time I'd see someone down the street or if I hadn't seen them in a while, they'd be like, oh, I saw that photo that you posted. It was really powerful. And um, I got an email saying that they were they were accepting entries for the Australian Photography Awards. And I thought, I've got nothing to lose. I might as well do it. Mm. And so I did. And I did not really expect what happened next um so first they i entered it in the documentary category which you know when you enter a category like that you're up against photojournalists from all over australia and around the world and um, a really high caliber of people entering so i did not think i stood a chance at all um 
but I thought, you know, maybe I have a shot at getting some kind of placement in the people's choice. I've got a lot of people that love that image and, you know, if they really mean it, then they'll hopefully vote for me, which they did. And so I, I actually won third place in the documentary category first. Which is a great achievement. Huge. Yeah. Um, the first prize winner is a photojournalist for Al Jazeera, who are a really big international media organisation. Mm. Um, second place winner is a photographer for The Guardian, um, another huge media outlet. And then there was me. From Bombardieri. <laughs> From Bombardieri. <laughs> um, and so I was, I was ridiculously over, overwhelmed with that. Um, and then they announced that my image was in the top 40 finalists for the People's Choice Awards. And then that got shortlisted to the top. Ten, I think, um, and then uh, I don't know. I've, I can't even remember the numbers, but yeah, and and then it took out first prize. So, very very grateful for everyone's support with that one. And again, that was for the People's Choice. People's Choice yeah. Awards. Yep, for the all of the photos that were entered across the entire um, awards, not just the documentary category, but any any category. Um, and yeah, so anytime any, anyone entered an award, anyone could vote for it. They could share it on their social media. And yeah, I just happened to get enough votes. Can I just say, I actually um, had a look at the documentary section today on the website, and there's actually a number of, uh, I guess, quite haunting photos that have captured the, the, the bushfires that mm. all of us experienced. So obviously, I mean, it was happening right across Australia, as we know. Yeah. So a lot of people, it obviously meant a lot to a lot of people. Mm. So the fact that yours was is number three, mm. that's brilliant. Well done. Thank you. Well done. Yeah. Now, I've got, we're running out of time, unfortunately. I'd love to know, mm. uh, when it comes to... That's, that's, a documentary, that's a documentary subject. See, I mean, I personally... When I first saw it, I didn't know about the, the categories. So I thought, you know, maybe portrait, maybe maybe landscape. But obviously I was completely off because I don't know what I'm talking about. Yeah. When it comes to subjects, do you have like a favourite one that you like to oh capture? Um, I love portraits of all type. I do a lot of uh, families and commercial work. Mm -hmm. And that's probably my favourite because people, you can just get such rich emotions and reactions out of. Um, I really appreciate landscape photography, but it's not something that I am 100% passionate about. I like to take photos of landscapes, but I wouldn't call myself a landscape photographer. So I think for something like the type of work that I do, mainly portraits and um, just storytelling, mm. really. Mm. Can I ask this question? Sure. Is it challenging to work with young children and <laughs> pets? Everyone asks that. They say never work with animals or children. Um, I personally love it. I think kids have just the most raw emotions and reactions and they're just they're just filterless and you can get the best photos out of them. And I think that comes from being a mother myself. I just absolutely love it. Um, adults tend to be a little bit harder. They're a bit more guarded. Um, but I think it's all about connection. And if you can make a connection with someone, regardless of who they are or where they come mm. from, then you're going to get a really powerful image out of it. Now, you mentioned you're a mother, but you're also mm. a school teacher as well. Yeah. If you're trying to take a portrait of, of a young kid and they're sort of, you know, misbehaving a little bit, does the teacher <laughs> voice come out? <laughs> it comes in handy, especially there's been a few occasions where I've had to do group photos or, you know, extended family sessions and there's 20 or 30 people in the photo session and, yeah, I have to get my teacher voice out. Weddings is another great one. Really? You really have to keep people in line. and wow. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's really important. So I think it does come in handy um, and it's something that I'm really grateful for to be able to have those skills. Well, I'm very grateful that you've popped into our studios Thank this you. afternoon. And again, congratulations, not just coming third, but also mm -hmm. People's Choice as well. Well done, Rachel. Thank, Thank, you. Thank you so much. And if you'd like to check out the winning shot, you can head to the Australian Photography Awards APA Facebook page or you can head to australianphotographyawards.com.au and uh, just click on the documentary section where you'll see it is the third photo along. This is Tuesday Drive. <laughs>